moved. Oh, good morning. Uh, this is from Mark chapter 12, verses 35 through 37. It says, Later, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple, he asked, Why do the teachers of religious law claim that the Messiah is the son of David? For David himself, speaking on the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies beneath your feet. Now that's important because the Lord said to my Lord, the Lord God said to my Lord, me, sit at the place of honor at my, Lord, at my right hand, God's right hand, until I humble your enemies beneath your feet. So since David called the Messiah my Lord, how can the Messiah be his son? That's an important distinction there. And then uh, it says at the end of verse 37, the large crowd listened to him with great delight. Um, and sometimes when I'm doing my Bible reading, it, it isn't so much what is being said as it is the context in which it is said. And today was kind of one of those instances. All right, so, you know, Jesus has just fended off the verbal attack of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he has stated what the most important commands are supposed to be. You love God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself. And he's proclaimed that those are the most important commandments. And um, then Jesus poses this question, which in Mark just sounds like he's putting it out to the crowds, but in other Gospels it says that he does this to stump the Pharisees and Sadducees. And he says, uh, why is the Messiah called the son of David when David refers to him with the honorific of my Lord? And so he does that to, to stump the Pharisees and then goes on to explain that, you know, David calls him my Lord because he's referring to God. He's not just the son of David. He is, he is the son of God. <clears throat> so here's the statement that caught my attention. Okay, It's at the end of verse 37, and it says, The large crowd listened to him with great delight. That was the statement that caught my attention. That's it. Now, the image this paints if taken out of context, is that everything is right in the world. People are having picnics and potlucks, just basking in the teachings of Jesus, and everything is rosy. The crowds, the large crowd, listen to him with great delight. But here's the problem. This happens two days after the triumphal entry. Now, if you remember, the triumphal entry happens on the Sabbath before Jesus is crucified. So, you know, this is a couple of days after that Saturday, Sunday, right in there. And two days after that, then three days later, three days later, the same crowd that is listening to Jesus with great delight, standing in the courtyard of Pilate, shouting, crucify him, crucify. And that's the problem with the crowd. The crowd is weak-minded and faithless. The crowd follows the whims of their own heart. The crowd doesn't have faith. Individuals 
have faith. The crowd cannot be trusted to do the right thing. Our goal should never be to gather a crowd or to appease them. Our goal should be to convert individuals into believers, to make faithful followers who stand resolutely on the word of God regardless of what the crowd calls them to do. Friend, we've got to be careful of the crowd. Because the crowd, crowd could be listening with delight one day and calling for our crucifixion the next. Pray with me. Lord, help us not to be swayed by the crowd, but to know where we stand, to know what we believe, to know who we follow. And that Though the whims of humanity may change, though the political correctness may ebb and flow like the tide, one day saying this is right and another day saying that is right. Lord, may we rise above the crowd to be faithful followers to stand on your word, to commit ourselves fully to you. Lord, I pray this day we would not be moved by anything the crowd might say, but that we would be moved by the word of God which is unchanging, always true, ever faithful. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, friends. I pray that you have a good day today. God bless.